Hello class, this is a, sort of a demonstration on how I do my illustrations and how I come up with ideas. So the Summa Crest letter, we had to take a letter, Now I chose the letter G, and I just started making a list. And you can see, you know, I went with giant and gold and giraffe and gate. And uh, no, I didn't just go with nouns, you know, I, I thought uh, uh, I'll go with some verbs. So I went gobble, which gave me the idea for gobbler. I thought, hey, maybe something with a turkey. Then I thought, oh, goblin. Uh, then gopher, then grunt. Now grunt, you might say, how would I do grunt? Maybe that's going to be like uh, some cavemen you're going to use, like they're going to grunt. Gruel, gruesome, gravel, grovel, gargoyle, goobers, uh, goo, gooey, go-kart. So I'm not censoring my list when I do that. Groceries, geyser. Now, I, I don't know how I got the geyser, but I got the geyser somehow, which made me think of geezer, which is a slang for an old man. And I thought, hey, that'd be cool to use old men to make my letter. Um, so, uh, gyro or uh, gyro, uh, garden, gardenia, gross, gargantuan, grizzly. So, I came up with a list of more than 20. There's some that I kind of like on here. I like this geezer idea. Um, I like the goat idea. I'm thinking maybe I could do a goat with a curly horn. Maybe the horn could be the G. Uh, I like the goblin uh, the reason I like the goblin is because goblins don't really have a set look to them. So um, then what you're going to do is just find some images. So I, I found some images and for my goat, I, I found a picture of a goat like this. And I thought, hey, I could do something, you know, with bringing in this horn around. But now you think, what am I going to do with the rest of the goat? So maybe I do the horn in sort of dark or colors. And maybe I just leave this other, the goat really faded in light and black and white. So really the horn stands out and there's my G. So that's one way to possibly do a G. Um, another idea I had was goblin. And I looked, I mean not goblin, gargoyles. And I found all kinds of gargoyles. Those are these uh, little statues that are in all these medieval buildings, churches usually. And um, I found this one and I thought, he doesn't really look like a G, but I could see like bringing his wings way over the top and making his head smaller. I'm not sure I like this head, so I found another picture. I think maybe I'll make a head that has almost like a beak here. Not quite as elaborate as this head. Uh, so I could do some things with that and work it out. And then as far as goblins, I looked up go pictures of goblins. And goblins, there's a huge range. I mean, there's these cartoon goblins like this. Here's kind of a goblin that's kind of cute. And uh, it's got a little helmet on and earring and things like that. And But they're all kind of mean. Most of them were green. Um, uh, some were realistic like Lord of the Rings. Some were very cartoonish and very silly. But what's nice about the goblin, it's sort of like a dragon. A dragon can be drawn so many different ways. Sometimes dragons look like horses. Sometimes they're kind of like dinosaurs or serpents or snakes. Or you get your Chinese dragon. And so you got all these different types of things that could be a dragon. So obviously in order to do a dragon... You may want to look at what other, how the other artists have done things. Now, I'm not just going to take this guy. I thought he kind of reminded me of G, the way he curled around here. But obviously, I'd have to really you know, work on that to get him look like a G. But I don't like all his features. So what I did is I figured, you know what, I'm going to kind of take some of the features from both of these and kind of make up my own character. Okay? So that's how I went about coming up with my idea. So I started with this sketch. And you can see, if I just show you this really quick here, I liked his nose coming out. I want to make his nose a little bit bigger. So I had that nose come out there a little bit further. And then at first his nose was real pointy and I thought I'd make him a little evil. So I gave a little lump in his nose here. And he's got a, a real furrowed brow here with a little eye. And maybe just a little bit of an eye peeking over there. Um, now I, I like this hat from this one with the spikes on there. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna add some little spikes to some kind of a little helmet up here. Maybe I'll do this kind of a thing and add a little spikes to there. Now, when I look at this, I think, eh, it's kind of like a G, but how can I make it more like a G? So maybe, um, maybe the fact that his ear goes out here so far, maybe I wanna bring that ear in a little bit, make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't distract from the shape of that G. So maybe I'll do that. Now, when I started drawing, I did some really light sketches. You know, I'm just, I kind of, you can see my foundation sketch, these really light lines, just kind of sketching where things are. Now, I played around with his arm. I noticed on this one, he's got kind of a furry hood. And I thought, hey, I like that hood. I'm not sure I want to make it furry, but it kind of separates his head from his body here. And his arm, he had a skinny little arm. I figured I gave him just a little bit of a muscle and added a little hook to the end of his arm here. So I'm really kind of making this up as I go along. And you can see when I first start, my drawing is pretty darn messy. 
Now this particular goblin, he had a sword. I didn't like the way that sword jetted out, so I figured I'd give him a little ax. Now, I don't know, this might be the end of his coat here, and I'm kind of sweeping his leg around. Maybe that's his arm, not sure. And I'm gonna put a little grip on that, that ax there. Maybe I say, okay, this hand is kind of coming into the way here. Maybe I wanna make this a little more circular. So I'm gonna bring that hand down a little bit. So I'm just gonna do this and maybe bring that down into here so it doesn't really interrupt with, um, with this curve that's going in here. So you can see, this is how I go about working on my ideas, okay? So he's got a big mouth. All the goblins that I saw had a lot of teeth in their mouths. So I'm gonna go with that sort of evil looking grin with the teeth and I'm gonna do this. Now I don't necessarily have to fill it all in, but I'm gonna be using this later. And when I get this like ready for my, um, to work on, what I'm, to get into the computer. So a couple things you can do with the computer. You can see this one, if I compare it to my hand, it's pretty small. So I'm gonna wanna get it much bigger on a sheet like this, okay? Now rather than redrawing it, okay, I'm just gonna uh, photograph, bring it to the computer, and then in the computer, I can go in and erase things, I can clean it up, and if you wanna try something, what you can do on the computer, you could put another layer on and try a different ax here over the top, and if you like it, keep it. If you don't, then just get rid of that layer. So anyhow, I'm gonna work on my drawing and kind of finalize it and get it looking good, and then uh, I'm gonna decide what am I gonna use this for. Is this gonna be done in, um, is this gonna be done on the computer? Is it gonna be done with watercolors? Am I gonna go watercolor and pen? I'm gonna make this ear a little darker here. So really I'm doing is I'm just finalizing my drawing here and doing all my sketches. And you can see I start pretty loose and I just clean up my sketch as I go. Um, I need to work on this hand a little bit more and maybe the arm. Maybe I like, uh, this, this one's got kind of tattered or ripped up clothing. So maybe I do something like that. Maybe I give him a little bit of a sleeve here and maybe his clothing is a little bit ripped up like that. So you can see some of the things that I'm gonna try here. So I just keep working, use my eraser, adding things, moving things around. And you can do this on the computer. You can do it in the sketchbook. I love the sketchbook because it's so much easier. You got everything you need to do here. Uh, so eventually I'm gonna get that cleaned up. And then I'm going to uh, use this. I think I'm gonna do this one in watercolors. So what I'm gonna do is photograph it, bring it in the computer, and then print it so it's larger. So it takes up more space like this one does on the sheet. So much larger G, okay? Then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna slide a piece of watercolor paper over the top of it on the light box and really lightly trace it. And then I'll show you later how to get going on that. Now, one other thing. Rather than just putting it on watercolor paper, and once you get a transfer of the watercolor paper, rather than just starting with the watercolors, in your sketchbook, you can paint watercolors on this guy, just to kind of practice. So once you get them transferred, you could practice. You might say, I'm gonna throw some green here and blue or whatever, and then maybe I'm gonna take my pen and try some textures on him and see if I like it. Once I kind of decide, hey, I like the way this looks, um, then I'm going to uh, then go on my good sheet of watercolor paper and start working on it that way.